We're live here from the extended stay in Florida. And what an interesting experience it has been so far, let me tell you. Uh, Upon checking in, I had my luggage all on the cart, the dolly, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I tug on the door, uh, but the left one is locked. And then this lady comes out disgruntled. She goes, it's this door, buddy. It's this door. Now, this lady doesn't even work here, okay? This is just some guest who comes out to harass me. I go, oh, thank you, and I, and I pull my stuff through the door, and she goes, geez, what do you lose brain cells being that tall at that height? Does oxygen not hit your brain? I'm like, oh, this bitch is trying to roast, you know? That would be my Yelp review. Upon arrival, I was immediately roasted. I go, this is your concierge, this woman with three teeth. Do, do, do you lose brain cells at that height? She, she tells me to come down on her level. She goes, come down to my level. Come down to my level where, where there's oxygen. I go, there, there's not floss or a toothbrush on your level, lady. Don't you have to be somewhere? Shouldn't you be handing out stuffed animals for people that pop balloons behind you, you fucking circus freak? I didn't say any of that. I just laughed and told her to have a good day because, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't expect that. When you, when you walk into a damn hotel, you just want to, you know, put your things down and, and get the room set up for your, for your stay, okay? You don't expect it to be roasted by a toothless carny, all right? I don't know if you've ever been to an extended stay, but that's what you're going to get. If you drop $1,100 for 17 nights, you're going to hear domestic disputes, all right, you're gonna you're gonna see some shit. All right, the parking lot is is a is a circus in itself. All right, there's a guy in a wheelchair. He has a two German shepherds pulling him, like some kind of trailer trash chariot. You know, he's got a marble in his mouth. He's going yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? There's a small yacht in the parking lot. I'm like, who who has a yacht and then stays at the extended stay? It just makes no sense. This is where you come when you want to hit your wife and no one will report it. All right. Someone got stabbed in the hallway and I walk by and go, well, at least it wasn't me. All right. That's the attitude here at the extended stay. I would love to be, you know, on the advertising team. I would, I want to be in charge of the commercials. You know, it's some guy using the stove. They let you cook crack here. Extended stay. I throw hands with my wife here. Extended stay. You know, somebody with like a gambling problem. I thought the Knicks were going to come back in the fourth quarter. I was wrong. Lost my mortgage. Extended stay. Wow. Yeah. I mean, when I walked into the room, the first thing I noticed was the top lock, not the deadbolt, the one that swings open, was missing a screw, which means somebody really wanted to come in here. Okay? Someone must have owed someone a lot of money for that lock to be broken. I was like a detective. You know, I'm having like flashbacks. I'm like, he was shot here. She was assaulted here. I find a shell casing. I'm like, that's a nine millimeter. (laughs) That seasoned detective that doesn't even need to, you know. They're like, we think it happened. He's like, shh, 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 shh. He just puts his ear to the floor. He's like, it happened right here. Yeah, well, I'm back in Florida. A lot of you guys know that I left Los Angeles, you know. Shortly after, it was burned to the ground uh, by peaceful protesters. And, uh, but I've been doing good, man. I had, uh, I had Perkins today. I don't know if you guys have ever been there. It's, uh, it's mainly known for its breakfast. You know, it's all old people. I like to go there by myself and just listen. You know, I'm like, what do 85-year-old people talk about? You know, I'm hoping it'd be like something interesting. You know, it was just two ladies next to me that couldn't believe that the price of strawberries went up 13 cents. It's like, whoa. The strawberry prices are rising. I'm like, yeah, you're 80. It's called inflation. You know, that's what we have here because our dollar is not backed by gold. So that's what you're going to get. Inflation. (laughs) I mean, every booth is just lined with a wheelchair. It's got a cane leaning up next to it. There's a walker with the tennis balls. You know, it's a retirement home. And uh, every guy there is wearing a Vietnam hat. Ah. It makes you wonder. It's like, are all these old people Vietnam vets? Or has one guy, you know, let's say, 
worked at AutoZone for the last 40 years, and now he found one off eBay because he found out that, you know, if he wears a Vietnam hat, someone will pay for his breakfast every now and then. They're like, hey, thanks for your service. And he's like, God bless. <laughs> like, this guy's worked at GameStop since it opened. And now he's getting free breakfast because he went on eBay and got a freaking Vietnam hat. You know, I'm just hoping one of them has a flashback. I would love that. Just be cutting into some eggs. Have a guy come over and be like, where is he? Where's Charlie Company? <laughs> I'm like, Jesus, sir. But no one. No one has a flashback. The only war they're fighting is with the ketchup packet. They're like, ugh. Can't get it opened. Uh, so, yeah, I've just been back in Florida, man, trying to figure trying to figure out the new lifestyle here since comedy is on hold. Uh yeah, just spending a lot of time on uh, on the Porsche website, on the BMW website, just building cars and not buying them. That's a habit I got into, you know. I'll just be like, oh, Porsche 911. You know, I want the audio package. Ooh, the red seatbelt. Check out. $180,000 log off. You know, you never buy it. I go, what does it look like in this color? Whoa. Whoa, that color's an extra thousand. Like it matters. You know, then I go to Zillow. I don't know if you guys have ever been on Zillow, but I was looking at buying a home and, uh, you know, just something small. I'm in like the hundred, hundred thousand, quarter million dollar range. You know, I don't care if it's a fixer upper. I just want something to call my own, right? But then I get this idea. I'm like, what's the most expensive house in Florida? You know, I'm like looking at three million, ten million. Then you get to the hundred million dollar homes and you're like, who is buying these? Hundred million dollars? I'll tell you, drug lords, drug lords are buying $100 million homes. And don't tell me, well, if you, if you work hard your whole life, you can shut the fuck up. Your entire family lineage hasn't grossed $100 million. All right, that is exclusively for tycoons of industry, both legal and illegal. All right, $100 million home, you need your own army at the front gates. And they have it, trust me. And that's when you're too big as a drug dealer, in my opinion, you know, you don't want to be the guy on the corner with the rocks in your pocket, you know, risking being arrested or getting shot in a drive by. All right. That's too dangerous. But you don't want to be the guy in the palace either. That just draws too much attention. All right. You want to be a middle class cocaine salesman. All right. You want people to go, I think he sells coke, but I also think he's a stock trader. I'm not sure. Nice Mercedes. Don't know if he's a drug dealer. That's who you want to be, middle-class drug dealer, all right? Don't be up in the castle with your armed security because it doesn't end well from those, for those guys, you know? I don't know if you've seen Narcos or Scarface, but that's how it usually ends, okay? Either the rival cartel or the military invades, you know, and that guy's always just sitting there, you know? They're always cooking something, you know? These, these drug lords are always good chefs, you know? They're just... They're chopping up some garlic. And all of a sudden you hear, Ugh! they stop dicing. They look out the window. They don't see anything. They have like 30 women in bikinis over on the couch, sitting on like a tiger rug, just counting millions of dollars. They go back to dicing. Then all of a sudden you see, Ugh! and one of your guards just falls. He gets shot in the head. And then you know it's over. When you start seeing your security drop, you just know that it's it's about to end really bad for you. You know, one of the strippers gets up that you have counting your money. She's like, I'll defend you. Ugh. She gets taken out. Now you're hiding behind your marble cabinet, you know, trying to load your shotgun in a panic. That's how it ends. And I always love the women that go, oh, oh, they're objectifying uh, women. And it's like, they only have them around because they're, they're beautiful. And it's like, yeah, pretty much. I love that they never talk to the women either. You know, the, the leaders of these cartels, you know, they just go, ladies, and they shoo them away. They just shoo them away when they're having a meeting. You know, and the women don't complain. They're happy to be there. They love scrolling through Instagram, being on that tiger blanket. You know, I just left Los Angeles. There are plenty of women that will happily be objectified if it means that they don't have to go to a nine to five and tan by an infinity pool all day. Cause then they'll make their own money. They do a few squats. Now they're Instagram models. 
They're selling protein powder, which I'm pretty sure has roids in it. But hey, they're sitting around going, hey, at least we're not at work. We're not at we're not at a job. Hell, you drive Uber enough in Los Angeles, you're going to want to be objectified. All right, I'll sit by anyone's infinity pool and let them run their fingers through my hair if it means that I don't have to go to work. Straight up. Just driving around town, don't throw up in my car, objectify me. I will gladly be up in the house in the hills if it means I just have to sit there and look pleasing. Unbelievable. They're objectifying. Shut up, lady. Go make a coffee. <laughs> That's all Los Angeles is. is just people out there not wanting a real job, including myself. Okay, everyone's just tired of waiting tables, hoping someone goes, hey, we could use you in a movie. You know, everyone's just, everyone speeds in L.A. That's, that's what's funny. Everyone's just racing somewhere. And it's like, where are you going? Do you really need the window seat with the charger at Starbucks so you can write another failed script that won't get picked up? Because that's what it is there. You know, every Uber driver wants to turn around and tell you about the movie they're writing. They're like, hey, I'm writing a movie right now about uh, uh, cars that transform into, into fighting warriors. And I'm like... You mean like Transformers? They're like, damn it. Damn it, that's already a thing? I'm like, yeah, there's 30 of them. Nobody even cares anymore. Then they just crash into a fire hydrant and start crying, and you're like, oh, okay. I didn't mean to be the one that, you know, woke you up, but maybe you should pack your things and head back to Wisconsin because, you know, you ain't very creative. I actually got a text from my uh, from my agent it's not a flex, okay? We didn't make any money together. So I get this text from this this agent. I'll read it for you. I was blown away by it. Let's see if I can find it here. Here it is. She goes, all right, this is a middle-aged white woman. All right, woman. She goes, hola, Sean. I hope you're well. Old school smiley face. Signed to the wrong agency. Can't even use emojis. She goes, last week, I signed up for Cameo to be able to sign up clients like you. Then yesterday, I received a request for a cameo. Totally never expected that. Well, then why just sign up? She goes, so you should totally be on there. If you're not already, are you? If not, I can send them your contact info to sign you up. Now, if you don't know what cameo is, basically it's where somebody pays a washed up actor or other celebrity, 30 to to $100, and they wish your grandma a happy birthday. Let's say your grandpa is a big fan of Star Trek, you know, and, he want, and you want William Shatner to wish him a happy birthday. You send him 100 bucks, and he'll go, Hey, Roger, I heard you were a big fan. Happy birthday. And your grandpa goes, Whoa, William Shatner wished me a happy birthday. It's sad is what it is. And if anybody paid me $30 to wish their grandma a happy birthday, I would personally fly to their house and fight them one-on-one, because that is ridiculous. So I completely ignore this text, right? I'm just looking at it like, should I block her now? Because this doesn't even, you know, this doesn't even register to me. Who, who would pay me to wish their grandma a happy birthday? Honestly, who following me on Instagram, and I love everyone that, you know, supports and, 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 and shares what I do, but if any of them paid $30, I would seriously question their mental state. All right. So then I ignore this text and I, I forget about it. I'm like, all right. Then she texts me today and goes, Hola, Sean. It seems like you fell off earth. Are you okay? Do you want to talk? We never worked together at all. And now she wants to be my therapist. So I go, Hey, I left LA. I don't think Cameo is going to help with stand-up either. Then she writes, I see. Cameo will help you make money and connect with your fans. Ugh. It can absolutely help with stand-up. Don't think so. But if you don't want to do it, that's your decision. Where are you living? Left LA? Until when? I put, look, no one is going to pay me $30 to wish them happy birthday. I need to do, you know, go on the road do shows. Hollywood is dead. I'll be in the South. She writes, 
forever or what? I go, who knows? I'm pretty sure there's a civil war coming. I'd buy a gun. She said, we have a few. Thank you. Smiley face. I write good. Stay vigilant. And she never, she never responded. But then she did say, send me an email saying that I think we should part ways until I come back to Los Angeles. Uh, so that's just the level of delusion that you deal with out there. Uh, I'm actually glad that uh, TikTok is being banned. I think that's hilarious. You know, what are they going to do? Just switch to another platform so they can dance. Oh, man. So I'll be here uh, at the extended stay until the 15th of this month. Then I'm going to go either buy a home or get an apartment somewhere. And uh, then I'll set up a real studio. And if you guys like it, maybe I'll do like a half hour. If that goes well, eventually do an hour. Um, but that's pretty much it. And, uh, oh, eventually I'm going to have it so people can call in, leave a voicemail, play it on the show. You know, we'll do stuff like what was the worst job you ever had? Uh, things like that. So that's the show today. Uh, thank you guys for listening and I will see you on the next one.